What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video where today we are going to be having ourselves a little tech talk because I'm going to be giving you guys the chance to get up close and personal to my dirt jump bike which when you get up close and see some of the details and little things that I've done it's probably the best dirt jump bike that I've ever had. One question I get asked all the time about my dirt jump bike and I have done for years is people saying to me what type of bike actually is it? Is it a BMX? Is it a mountain bike? Now you guys that are keen and avid mountain bikers will know that it is a dirt jump bike but for those of you that are perhaps new to the mountain bike world then a dirt jump bike is a mountain bike but it's very specifically designed for doing tricks which is why it's got things like no front brake, single speed. I often describe it as the equivalent of a Formula One car compared to your road car. It's designed for one thing and one thing only and that thing certainly isn't pedalling around. Let's start things off today then by talking about the frame. So this is a high bike DRT11 team edition. Now you actually can't buy this frame, it was made specifically for me and Sam when we joined high bike and started riding for them. It's made of aluminium and it is absolutely tiny. And the reason for that is because you want to be able, or we want to be able to throw it around and do lots of tricks. So not only is it small, but there's also lots of things with the geometry. Like let's start at the back, for example. So this rear triangle here is really short because what that enables you to do is slam the wheel in really far and with a short back end, when you're spinning and flipping out of ramps, it makes the rotation so much easier. You do compromise sta uh, stability slightly, but by having a shorter bike, just makes all of your tricks so much easier. You kind of want the same feeling at the front, but obviously you can only make this so short before your handlebars and wheel would start interfering in this sort of area, which is bad for tricks like tail whips and bar spins. So the way that you achieve that feeling up front without changing the length here is raising the bottom bracket and steepening the head tube because what that does is it lifts your feet up and it pushes the handlebars underneath you so although you're not actually making the distance shorter it's making it feel shorter by adjusting the position of them two objects. Moving up to the cockpit area of the bike I run the Gusset S2 cockpit so we have got 35 mil clamp bars there for increased strength. They're cut down to 740 millimeters wide with a 20 mil rise. So I like to run the bars nice and flat because it actually makes it easier to do bar spins. If you've got the bars up here, it just feels weird to sort of pass them around and find the handlebars again. Stem is 33 millimeters long, which is actually one of the shortest stems that you can buy. And that is a real key detail on a jump bike because again, when you're doing bar spins, if you've got a super long stem, then by the time the bars are backwards, your hand is gonna be here and it makes it all awkward. So what you're trying to achieve here is to try and keep everything almost like in one place. And it's stronger because you've not got as much leverage over it. So for heavy landings, these little short stems are just a little bit stronger and stiffer. I'm running Gusset S2 grips, which are in a super soft compa compound. They've got no flange on them, which again, for bar spins, quite a lot of the bikes adapted around doing bar spins. It just doesn't get caught in your hand. It doesn't get stuck. Some riders prefer it. For me personally, I like that nice clean feel and the soft compound is just so nice. And you know, your grips and your pedals are so important on a bike because they're actually the only points of contact between you and the bike. So if they don't feel good, then there's a good chance you're probably not gonna ride or feel that good on it. This is where the minor details begin. So I'm running a Magura brake which has got a carbon fiber lever blade. So you can see that there, that's super lightweight, really flexible, almost scary, feels like it's gonna snap. But then around this side as well, we've also got a carbon fiber lever clamp. I've also got a titanium top cap bolt here, which is from Pro Bolt. Every bolt on this bike that could be changed has been changed to titanium. Pro Bolt sent me out a kit, which is absolutely amazing. The fasteners are such good quality. I've got the Pro Bolt titanium fasteners on the scales now, and every single bolt on this bike weighs in at 62 grams. So not only do they look insane, but they weigh nothing. 114 grams the original bolts weigh, which is quite a big difference in weight, but it's obviously such a small detail on the bike. But in my opinion, when you're building like a super bike, 
it's these little details that really, really make it stand out from the others. I'm using Mazoki DJ Bomber forks up front in this amazing red color, which that just goes with the theme of this bike so good. I used to have black forks on there. Once I put these on, the bike was transformed. There are 100 millimeters of travel and they're in a 110 boost, which is making that triangle on the wheel wider, which that just helps increase strength of the bike. With a dirt jump bike, you run the fork solid. I've got about 160 PSI in there. And the reason for that is because you don't want movement. They are there to move when there's a big impact or a big landing. But in terms of pumping and hitting transitions and ramps, any movement is bad because it creates an unpredictability and it also causes a loss of speed. When we're looking at the fine details on the forks, just saying about titanium bolts, I've got that tiny one there, which is titanium. That is such a small bolt. And then the clamps here for the forks that hold the wheel in, all four of those are also titanium from Pro Bolt. I choose to run the Halo Chaos wheels and I have done even back when I was buying wheel sets because these are lightweight but they're also absolutely bomb proof. You get custom stickers, so depending on the color of your bike, you can choose what you want to run. The Superdrive Hub, that is a 120 points of engagement, which is important, especially when you're riding skate parks and you're putting a lot of stress for a single gear on the bike. If you have a bad hub, then you're gonna end up skipping gears. Obviously that's important, but also for the sound, listen to this. That sounds incredible and I'm actually running a HG driver on there which enables me to run an 11 speed sprocket on there and in turn allows me to run an 11 speed chain. So BMX chains are quite a bit thicker which again it contributes to the weight. I'm using the Schwalbe Billy Bonkers tyre. Now the tread pattern on these is almost a slick tyre because a jump bike you're not really searching for grip that much, you're more wanting rolling speed and precision which a clean tire like that offers both these are also very lightweight but the one thing you do want out of a dirt jump tire is a stiff construction on the sidewall because heavy landings sideways that comes under a lot of stress and if you've got a weak sidewall you're probably going to blow it off the rim or give yourself pinch flats which no one wants i'm also running inner tubes in here i've got the schwalbe super light 26 inch tubes which weigh about half the weight compared to the normal 26 inch ones and you might be sitting there thinking how particular is this guy he's got lightweight tubes because you start talking about rotational mass which has a big impact on certain tricks when we're talking about rotational mass i'll give you a little demonstration so with the wheel not spinning and i spin the handlebars you can see there's no gyroscopic effect the wheel spins freely however as soon as i spin the wheel here that's now created weight, which when you spin it, you can see how much that's bobbing. There we go, that's actually insane, the difference. Now I've actually heard that when the wheel is spinning, the, the weight is increased by three times the amount. And when you're doing tricks like bar spins and tail whips, that actually has a big effect because you can really feel the difference when you're pushing the bars around. Or tail whips, I actually pull the brake because the wheel stops completely then and there's no rotational mass to contend with. The crank set that I'm running on this bike is a Race Face Atlas. They're aluminium. We've got a 28 tooth sprocket up front which is directly fitted to the bike. And the reason I run such a small sprocket is for clearance on skate park ramps. When you're hopping in, if you've got like a big dinner plate, 36, 42 tooth, then it's gonna catch and it could send you over the bars or do damage. I don't really ride massive jumps anymore where I need that extra gearing that a big sprocket gives you. So this keeps weight down, it looks tidy, and it also provides good clearance. These cranks are 165 millimeters long, which is so, so important on a jump bike because if they're too long, then when you're doing bar spins, the clearance here can get really, really close. And that ties back into what I was saying at the start of the video as to why you can't have your top tube here too short but the 165 millimeter crank arms ensure that there's going to be no interference there the pedals that i've chosen are the gusset merge pedals they're actually a nylon plastic pedal with metal pins but i absolutely love them they feel amazing on your feet which is very important the seat is a gusset s2 with an s2 post now as you can see it's very tidy looking there's no rails there's not even a hole in the top for the pivotal bolt and that is because it actually bolts up from underneath in the seat post which is very very clean it looks very very 
flush there like that. Before we weigh the bike, I just want to give a little bit of attention to this area because every bolt down here is titanium. You've got the wheel bolts from Halo, these from Pro Bolt. On this chrome caliper with the bolts for the disc all being titanium, I just wanted a bit of titanium appreciation for this corner because it looks absolutely insane. So I have a bike that you can't put a price on really because you can't buy certain components yet I've got a 4.99, 3.99 set of scales from Amazon which are gonna tell us the weight of the bike. So 12 and a half, 12 and a half kilos. So my e-bike weighs about 25, 26 the all mountain, the likes about 17. Mm -hmm. So this is down at 12 and a half kilos. I reckon a lot of that weight is coming from the crank arms, which is weight that's quite low down in the center of the bike. So when you're doing tricks, you don't really feel that in there. So there we have it then. That is a closer look at my dirt jump bike. If I've missed anything out or you want to ask any more questions about it, then put them down in the comments because I'll try to get back through an answer to everyone. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's slightly different to the style of content that I usually make. But let me know what you thought because if you want to take a closer look at other bikes in my collection, I'm more than happy to give you guys a detailed rundown of how I set them up and why things are like they are on the bikes. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one, leave some comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose, won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Get up, nah, I ain't a